We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence. How are you, Ben? Doing excellent. How are you, Patrick? Excellent. I'm I'm very well. Good. I'm excited about this. Uh, I will I I will admit. Usually we know what we're doing here. <laughs> we have a good we have a plan. We've prepared. No, we, we, we don't. Don't pretend. Today like that. we today we don't. We had a little gap in the schedule, and so we're 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 filling it with an idea that we had all of 14 seconds ago. Which is we're going to talk about the last five books we've read, each of us, uh, and I and I will say the, the the last five books I've read and or am finishing reading at the current time, and so I'll give my five. You give your five. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. We'll talk about why we chose those books. We'll talk about books. We'll talk about um, what the books are about. Cool. Cool. Yep. All right, and we'll see. We'll see if we can make this uh, make this work. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. I'm going to do the, my five first. Yes. All right. First, uh, do you read? Are you all Kindle at this point, or all audiobook? Where are you primarily? I am in, like ingesting probably books? seventy to eighty percent audiobook, and then real, yeah. real book. I can't do Kindle at all. I am. Uh, I, I take it back. I'm probably like seventy thirty, in terms yeah. of like yeah, more audio than real book, physical and audio. Yeah. yeah. I'm short of. Uh, I read a little bit of fiction at night before bed. Short of that, I'm 100% physical. I still I have the Kindle. I can't get into audiobooks for whatever reason, but uh, so physical books are are 100% for me. Okay, so here's the five. I, one I mentioned already in a previous episode. It's called Rest: Why You Get More Done When You Work Less by Alex uh, Sujung Kim Pang. Right there, Rest. One uh, the the next one I'm still in the midst of is called Active Learning Online. Uh, by Stephen Coslin. That's a very specific book uh, I'm reading because I'm developing a brand workshop uh, for functional branding. So I am uh, trying to immerse myself in best practices as it relates to learning uh, and teaching. Two books by an author named Mike McCallowitz. Um, first, uh, I read at the end of last year called Profit First. Have you read that no. before? We'll talk about that. Yeah. But, um, so the first one was called Profit First and his most recent is called Get Different, uh, subtitle, uh, hold on, let me find it. Subtitle is marketing that can't be ignored. Oh, probably should have remembered. I like that. Um, and profit first is let me just find the subtitle just because it's useful. Uh, transform your business from a cash eating monster to a money making machine. Mm. And then the last book, I I would guess that you'd read this, but Blue Ocean Strategy. I have um, not. I've actually never heard um, of it. Oh man, we need to talk about that because that's 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 got CompTrain written all over. Oh wow! Um, subtitle: How to create uncontested market space and make the competition irrelevant. So we'll talk about why oh, those books really cool. uh, maybe as we go. But I'd love to hear your five. Okay, my five. Um, I didn't know you were gonna have them right there with you, and you well, yeah. So that's yeah. the advantage of the physical is they're yeah, well, just right here. Um, next okay, one. and the subtitles and everything. You're like way we we did this. We decided to do this like 14 seconds ago and you have like... I know. All right. Know. Uh, first one is Chatter right here if you're looking. Uh, the yep. Voice in Your Head, Why It Matters and How to Harness It by Ethan Cross. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is actually Next Door. And I not can remember who wrote it either, but it says uh, Alchemy. Um, it's essentially like... Uh, oh, um, um, hold on. I have that. Keep that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's essentially like the, how to create magic in your business. It's not about logic. It's about um, people. Rory, Rory Sutherland. Sutherland. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's such a good book. It's so. Actually, a listener sent it to me. So a listener was like, good. hey, I just read this book. I think you'd really like it. Can I send it to you? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, it is so good. Um, the next one is uh, The Naked Mind. Um mm. The subtitle is Control Alcohol. So find freedom, discover happiness, and change your life um, by Annie Grace. Um, that was a recommendation from one of my members. We're doing the Whole30 and he got off of uh, alcohol and he's like, oh my God, you have to read this book because it's... Hmm. Oh, we'll get into it. Um, maybe we'll get into it. Um, 
<laughs> the next one is Rejection Proof. Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to remember the name, but that's at home. That's on my nightstand. That's an actual physical book too that I read, but it's at home. Uh, maybe you can pull it up. Yep. I'm, I'm um, it's essentially, it's um, this kid, how to, yep, this right. kid that a um, hundred, we spent on a hundred days um, every day trying to get rejected from things. Cause he had this big, massive fear of mm. fail of, of being rejected. Oh, God. Um, and a lot of stuff went viral and he wrote a book about it. It was actually recommended um, from a, um, a professor um, that I know at Millbury college for business. Um, and then just to just finish it, it's called recession proof. How I uh, rejection proof, sorry, how I beat fear and became invincible through a hundred days of rejection by Gia Jiang, yep. J uh, uh, G J <laughs> J I A N. That's why I can remember the name of this. Yes. There you go. Um, Gia Jiang. And then the last one is uh lifespan by David Sinclair. Hmm. Yep. He has a podcast of the same name yeah, that he's, a listener just reached out and said, you guys yep. would love that show. And I, I had no idea. So uh, there you yeah, go. He'd be a great guest for us. Mm, let's yeah. try to make that happen. Um, okay. Where do you want to, where do you want to, well, we don't know in? what we're doing, Patrick. So, okay. So here, here's, here's <laughs> what I would say, cause I'll, I'll just give you, cause I'm actually excited about this. This is something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, I, I th this is something I was very, very bad at for a long time, which is, Seeing a book seemed interesting. That's I would enjoy that. Buying it and reading it for no other reason than I guess I'll read that one next. <clears throat> and something that Tim Tim Ferriss said, who knows? I probably heard it three years ago and didn't didn't uh, apply it forever until recently. He said something that uh, um, he said it's better to read a book just in time than just in case. And the reason, and I think maybe I'm, I'm reading into it a little bit, but I think the reason is that when we read a book just in case, like, oh, that's, that seems like a good book. That seems interesting. We, it's really, really hard to figure out how to actively apply that to your life at that particular period. As opposed to when you're, when you're, when you read something just in time, when you read something because, oh, this, re this relates to a project oh, I'm working man. on. This relates really to a like particular that. habit I'm yes. trying to build. Then you read it with the thought of like, okay, how do I actually bring this oh, into wow. that project? How do I try to bring this into that habit or that strategy or whatever it is? And so it makes it, it by reading it just in time, you bring it much closer to where you can t take action on it versus like, I just think about the book Principles by Ray Dalio, which I think we both like, we both appreciate, we both read, but I don't know how to, I don't know really what to do with that when I'm reading it. Like other than thinking about like, gosh, it would be great to have principles in place, right? Like that's good. But that's just, <laughs> excuse me, that's just a book. Like it's really hard to figure out when do I need to read this and then so that I can do something with it. And so the book, so what I've been trying to do lately is find and read the books that are related to that, that are appropriate for the something that I'm working on. And the something, and I alluded to it with the, the act of learning online, which is not a particularly interesting book unless you're looking for it. Um, it, like I mentioned, I was, wor I'm working on this, this brand workshop, um, that I, that I, that I want to launch through functional branding in three or four months. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is, is work through some of the books I've read before, but also some books that I just kind of wanted to, to figure out like, what are the big markers in this workshop that I want to build the workshop around? Right. And so part of that is the, part of that is the mechanics of running an effective, uh, valuable workshop, which is kind of that active learning online. And then part of it is the content inside of that workshop, which is the blue ocean, blue ocean strategy, the get different and a couple other books, actually alchemy would be a good one to kind of revisit the idea being what, as I'm reading, as I'm reading, get different, as I'm reading blue ocean strategy, what I'm thinking about is, okay, that's interesting. Can I bring that into the, the something about something inside of this workshop? Where does that fit alongside of that? How do I introduce that? What do I have to introduce first, et cetera, et cetera. So reading it with that project in mind, allows me to really engage with the material on a far deeper, far more realistic level than if I was just like, yeah, I should read that because everybody's read it and there's 5 million copies in, in, you know, out there in the world. I love that. That's giving, that's giving a language to something I felt for a very long time, but didn't really know how to express. And it's the reason I struggled massively with school because it was so abstract. Mm -hmm. It was nothing for just in time. It was just in case. Mm-hmm. And I had no way to practically apply anything. So it didn't seem concrete or real. 
Now, when I sit down with, I'm doing exactly what you do is, Mm -hmm. is this relevant? Will this resonate? And how can I work this in? And (coughs) it totally changes the ball game when you're reading. And by the way, if you're two or three chapters in and you can't, like it goes, it goes away. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Like you don't, because otherwise, Ryan, you, Ryan otherwise you're just reading just to do it. You're doing, you're reading just to read, yeah. to finish a book. Yeah. I, I think Ryan, <laughs> I think Ryan Holiday's rule is a hundred minus your age. That's how many pages you give a book. So if you're, if you're 20, you give it, you know, 80 pages. If you're 80, you give it 20 pages. And if it doesn't hook you then, then I you move it. on. Cause there's more, there's more, there's more books to read. That's too many pages for, oh no, that's, yeah, that's a lot of pages. <laughs> Yeah. I, I usually give it like, well, I usually like, give, you're already half, you're, depending, I usually give it like you, uh, you read the intro, which by the way, I used to always skip the intros in books because I thought it was like, really? yeah, weird. Like, but the intros are yeah. amazing. Like it's, yeah, they're, I still yeah. do skip when they go and here's where we're going to talk about chapter two and here's where we're in chapter three. Like yeah. that makes no yeah, sense yeah, yeah, to me. Yeah. Like, but the rest of it is mm. like some of the best stuff is in the intro. And then, um, yeah. uh, the first chapter if it's like, no, what, this is so, then I'm done after the first chapter. If I'm like, yeah. eh, it's the second chapter and I won't go past the third um, if I'm not hooked. Mm-hmm. But yeah. 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 I want a little hack for when we have people on the podcast who wrote, write books. Obviously, I'll, I'll read as much as I can if we've got time for it. But right before the the interview, I always reread the intro because you – it's there's so much yeah. they're just laying the framework they're laying the foundation and once you read through it you can start to you can start yeah. to kind of connect things but the intro is always it's funny maybe the intro should be the the, the conclusion but that probably wouldn't work all right so um, i'm just curious i i know we don't really have an agenda with this conversation but i'm curious like the one that gets me the most is blue ocean strategy like what what is yeah. what is that so the the dichotomy that the book sets up and this book came out oh, 2006 2007 it's it sold a, a ton of copies the dichotomy it sets up is that, it, and obviously this is a business book, which uh, won't surprise anybody that you and I are reading business books, but is that there are red oceans and blue oceans. Red oceans uh, are red because they're bloody. They're bloody because that's where all the competition is. Blue oceans are blue because there's nobody else there. Mm. And so the idea is, can we figure out how to create a blue ocean for ourselves so that we are not competing for the same scraps that everybody else is competing because when that happens, when you compete with everybody else, what what is ultimately what is the market demand? Lower prices, <laughs> right? And so everybody ends up fighting the same fight, which is can we can we lower our costs a little bit more? Which is another way to say can we reduce our margins a little bit more? Can we reduce our profit a little bit more? And maybe you can win that game, but the problem with winning that game is that you've won that game and now you're just the low cost option. So a blue ocean strategy is one where you try to do two things or you do two things successfully. One is you increase the value that you offer your end consumer while at the same time decreasing the cost by which you deliver that. And that in therein lies both the challenge and the, and the opportunity is can you figure out how do I build something that nobody else is building and how do I do it in a way that costs me less? Make sense? Does that cost you less than in turn cost less to the com- – so are you eventually still a competing uh, price? No, not always. No. Um, um, and um, the the book has lots of uh, examples. And hold on. Let me pull a couple examples up. Um, I love the idea though of the red and yep. the blue ocean. That resonates yep. completely in terms of, yeah, you're going to fight, fight, fight or go off and mm-hmm. do your thing. Hold on. I just want to pull up real quick a couple of the – examples again this is the this is this is the downside of the uh let's let's see if this works is that i was not prepared for that but um okay uh so some of the examples uh, and they they lay out uh, they have six different kind of paths by which you get this so some of the examples uh and these are sometimes slightly dated but home depot um, was able to do it. Curves. Do you remember Curves? <laughs> the the fitness. Yep. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Bloomberg. Do you know uh, Bloomberg Terminals? Um, so you yeah you you remember the, that yeah yeah. Um, Dyson um, are just some of the examples. Just kind of in the first couple of chapters that they've started to pull apart. And so no, there isn't there isn't. It doesn't mean that what you're trying to do is offer something at the cheapest price. What you're trying to do is find that right bl- blend of high value and low cost. And if you can do that, 
Mm. And, and oftentimes doing that is building something uh, different or in a different way than other people are, are interested in or willing to do. Mm. All right. That's on my list. So here's a question that I thought about, like, as you were reading, as you were listening off yours, how many on your last five came as rec- like personal recommendations from somebody else? Zero. Zero. All of them came. Let me, let me have, think. Um, I have th- three of them are, are so mine. rest. <laughs> three of the, f- that's three awesome. of the five. Rest, which I had mentioned before was kind of a random read at the end of the year was, uh, somebody on Instagram. Well, I guess this, this kind of counts. Somebody on Instagram posted it, um, just posted the cover and I just screenshotted it or saved it. And then as I was, this is another thing that I do, which is kind of funny is every year, my birthday and Christmas, mostly my family knows that I don't want anything. And so they just give me Amazon gift cards. And so like when that happens, I have this kind of this, like this, this uh, pile of Amazon cash. And so twice a year or three times a year, I'll just spend like 150 bucks on books. And so I'll just like go through my random list and say, well, what am I going to add to it? Um, and so that's where rest came from. So that was kind of a recommendation. Active learning online was, I was starting to look for, um, what kind of materials are out there as it relates to active learning and specifically, um, in a digital environment. So I was lucky to find that the two Mike McCallowitz ones, I had heard of profit first before. Um, but, uh, again, in the, in the spirit of reading something just in time and not just in case, one of my big things at the end of last year coming into this year was, uh, like, it's really time for me to get my shit together as it relates to finances. And so I'd kind of had that in the back of my mind as like, I want to read that. I want to check that out. Um, and so I got that at the end of last year and read it and loved it. And that's what led me to his new book called get different. Um, and then do you like that one as much is get different as good as is get different as good as yeah, they're, they're, they're focused on, uh, on different ends of the business, but yes, actually, especially for gym owners, I would say, I would actually say like gym, like the people I work with gym owners, coaches, uh, um, people who aren't trying to build giant digital companies get different is actually, it could be wildly, wild, wildly valuable. Um, cool. And Mike McCallowitz, I really like, he's funny. Uh, he writes in a very kind of, um, uh, approachable manner and his kind of his life tagline, which I just love is his goal is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. I think I'm getting that right. Um, and so he's written five or six or seven different books. Um, all of which kind of look at a different element of, uh, of building a business, <laughs> oftentimes a small business, oftentimes like the businesses that you, you know, that you're in that I, that I work with. Um, and then just to finish the stack blue ocean strategy, I found, I have a random book of, of Harvard business review puts together like uh, compilations of articles that they've done. And blue ocean strategy started as a series of Harvard business uh, articles. And so I read one of those and I was like, Oh, that seems really interesting. Let me, d- let me go get the, the full book. That's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Um, all right. Your, your, your top pick, you're going to recommend one book out of that five. Mm. You don't know who you're recommending to. You're going to put it into like a Yankee swap rest. No doubt. Yeah. Rest. The other, the other ones are very, very, one of them is very specific. The other three, I would only give to somebody who's in the right position. Um, I wouldn't, the the others I don't think would resonate, but rest, I think everybody out there should read and, and could get a lot of value from. Very cool. What about you? Talk about your stack a little bit. What do you got over there? (laughs) I'm really interested in the alcohol one. Uh, Why why did the, why did that resonate enough for you to pick it up? Given that like, you don't, you don't drink that much. No. Uh, but it's, it's one, it's like where you're the same thing with you is it's so powerful for the way I talk mm. to other people. So I talk to a lot of people that that is their number one vice. Mm. So to me, to be more well versed yeah. in that helps out a ton. And it came from recommendation from one of my members who's recommended uh, two or three other great books. So um, usually my rule is when you hear a book recommended for a third time, you, you got to yep. read it. Um, but the same rule is if somebody that recommended a really good book to you recommends another you should read that one as well. Um, but it speaks more to the psychology of alcoholism or uh, what's what alcohol is really. And that's how he kind of sold it to me. He's like, you know, it's 
this weird thing where like you can't go. I know you don't drink yeah. at all, so you're aware of this, but everywhere you go, everything you do as an adult is centered or from a social perspective, is centered around alcohol. Like always. That's a really strange thing when you think about it. Actually, we've been programmed that you have you're gonna have a really hard time socializing or having fun without alcohol in front of you. That's what we've been pre-programmed mm -hmm. into do basically. That's what she basically breaks apart, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, of those books, so like my favorite of those books, uh, um, I would say Alchemy was my favorite, but it's also because like, it's probably the most nuanced um, for the smallest market. But if you're in marketing of any sense, if you run a business of any sense, if you have any say in the way you, uh, the strategy or direction um, of your, of a business, it's fat. It's, yeah. it basically, the world has become more and people, it won't be surprising for people to listen to this, but that I'm a fan of this, but the world has become more and more data driven. It's all about logic. And that's not the way that we actually make decisions. Right. It's, an, it's just, we're illogical um, creatures. We are completely illogical creatures. And basically it's what the, the, Basically, the message of the story is that business reward, running a business, you will always, you will never get fired for being logical. If you present the data and the data supports your decisions and it doesn't work out, yep. mm -hmm. people rationalize it again, rational, rationalize it away as something, some fluke. If you're illogical, if you're what he calls psycho logical, <laughs> right? Which is the way we actually make decisions from a psychological perspective. And it doesn't work out. You're going to be fired at the very next opportunity. So that drives people to not, uh, to not take the risks that have the massive rewards. And he gives amazing examples from parallels from, um, our regular everyday lives to business, to the animal kingdom, to business. And just, uh, he's also Roy Sutherland's, uh, uh, he's funny and, um, uh, a, a very good writer. Uh, yeah. One of the, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. One of the, one of my, the things that I've, that I remember from this book and I read it a while ago is to always, uh, always try to scent the soap, right? In other words, Remember yeah. that like when we use soap, right? Of course, everybody knows this. Soap doesn't smell like anything, but they scented it so that it feels like we're getting cleaner, <laughs> right? It feels right. like- all these, all these things like like your toothpaste, yeah. Aquafresh came out and they had the three different stripes inside of it. The fact that your toothpaste has stripes inside of it should not matter yep. at all because it's if they mix it all together, but you don't, your brain doesn't work like that. You go, oh- that's to, to the point where like, it's all about how you package things. It's how you present things. It's the language you use. It's the timing of it. Mm -hmm. It's, there's so, it's the herd mentality. It's why it's, there's so many cool things to it. So, um, I really found that a very fun read. I've actually, I actually bought five copies and passed it off to a lot of people That's on awesome. my team. That's cool. Um, just cause I think it's a, there's a lot of tangents in it and there's a lot of like, which, which bugs me when books do that. Like they go off in these big yeah. descriptive tirades of stuff that has nothing to do with the, the, the through line of the book. Yeah. But I love this right, um, right in the start. There's, there's Rory's rules for alchemy and alchemy. Number five is a flower is simply a weed with an advertising budget. <laughs> that gives you a good sense of the book. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> right. Um, and then probably the, that was probably my favorite. The one I would recommend to other people would probably be Chatter because it's just yeah, can so. You, can you talk about what that? Because I've heard that, but I've never, yeah. I haven't dived into enough of even what it is. So it's written by a psychologist um, who basically, in his whole thing, is like he spent his entire uh, adult life studying the mind and how to be calm in stressful situations and how to be the most productive mind possible. And he teaches this. He, he starts with a story of um, he's standing in his kitchen in his underwear with one of those like little trophy baseball bats mm -hmm. um afraid that somebody's going to break in through the window because his mind has been kind of like going crazy over this letter he got mm. and how your mind can just spin and spin and spin and 
it obviously resonates with people on this podcast because of the things that we talk about. The way I frame it is a little bit different. But the way I frame it is your mind is, I shouldn't say it's different because I can't remember exactly the way he does it, but to the mind is really, really amazing. Like it's, no one's doubting that. Mm-hmm. It's the most amazing machinery, call it what we want, computer, call it like whatever it is that's ever existed in on the human, on, on, not on, the human, on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. Like it's incredible. The human mind is amazing. But it has, it's not all good <laughs> with it. It's just not, it's just not all set up for product productivity. It's not all set up for fun, joy, enlightenment, and love and peace. And with it comes with the amazingness comes a little bit of a glitch. And the amazingness is it can focus, it can help you read an entire book, and it can help you problem solve. That's what it does amazingly, right? And that's why we have cars and the internet and tables and all this, you know, um, glass windows. Like it's all comes from this ability to focus and solve problems. But there's also this side effect that comes along with that machinery, which is chatter, Mm -hmm. which is just the continuation of the voice in your head when it doesn't have anything else to do and or it's massively distracted by something else. Mm -hmm. And how do you control the chatter so you can be better at the other stuff? Mm -hmm. So that certainly resonates with a lot of people. Um, Rejection Proof is just a fun read um, for sure. And it actually makes you think a lot about your own kind of like, especially for introverts like you and I, um, it's, it really pulls into like the kid's super brave. Mm -hmm. and it, as some of these things went like he used to, he would film them all and they, um, he downloaded them and they all went like kind of viral and stuff. And he would go, so an example would be the book starts off with him, um, driving around a suburb in LA, um, looking for a house that he can knock on the front door in his carrying a soccer ball and ask the person, whoever answers the door, he doesn't know who's going to be, if he can play soccer in their backyard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, is oh no sorry it's not it's in Texas so he doesn't even know if he's like someone's gonna pull out a shotgun yep. like um so it's a bunch of things like that where he has to ask for strange things with the idea of like this is not gonna work I'm gonna get rejected and how do you work through that from a psychological perspective um, lifespan is it it's David Sinclair so he's kind of the leading forefront in um, just that longevity research um, Harvard um, and uh, it's really good but it's also like all those books yep. it's it's sciencey um Can yeah I, let me ask what, the rejection for yeah what made you pick that up right because the alcohol one yeah you kind of picked that up that with was, the idea like this i can use this this will help my my communication with, with you know members of the gym etc what was the what was the impetus for the rejection proof maybe it was because you feel like you're still you, you know you're worried about rejection but i'm curious no, that was the one that um, I did a – I spoke to Middlebury College mm-hmm. and that was the thank you gift that uh, the professor gave me. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so he's wildly successful. Um, and um, so he's given me a couple other books as well. He gave me um, – oh, man, I think he gave me like The Monk Who Moved My Cheese or not The Monk Who – that's I'm mixing up too. Uh, <laughs> the Monk Who Sold His – no, I'm mixing up – who moved my cheese? Yep, that's one. <laughs> and uh, not the monk who sold his Ferrari. That's another book I read. Uh, <laughs> the monk in the riddle. Okay. That's what it was. Can we write the, the monk in the riddle? The, is a the cool monk book. who moved yeah. my cheese, though. Can we go? The monk who there? moved my cheese. That's a. That's the next book. There, actually, it's going to be. It's a sequel. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So that was a, a highly recommended, or that was recommended by somebody you highly respect. So you're like, okay, let me. That was that. that was the other principle of like somebody recommends a book that recommend another book that you like, you should read that one. Cool. Yep. Love it. Um, I, I'll just add one more thing that I've been working on only from the beginning of the year. And so I, I do not have this down yet, but I'm curious your, your thoughts on it. Uh, Cause there it's in line with the just in time and not just in case. And it's something that I was, that I just kind of myself has been, uh, I've been calling them deep dives. And the idea is, you know, I've got all these things, all these ideas, all these, not even ideas, all these kind of subjects that I'd love to know more about. I'd love to read more about it, learn more about it, et cetera. 
Um, and so what I started thinking about at the end of last year is like, well, I, because I kept always doing this little dip in, like, oh, I'll read one book about that and I'll read another book about, it. and ultimately you don't get too far with it if you don't have a, a way to apply it. And so I started thinking about, well, okay, well, what is, how do I combat that? And so what I started thinking about is, okay, let me do these six week deep dives. It during which the podcasts I listen to are related to this subject, the books I read are related to this subject, and the purpose of it is so that I can do X, Y, or Z at the end of those six months. Can't be an expert in six months. That's not possible. That's not, that's not the point. But the point is like, can I allocate the energy and the time and effort that I'm putting towards reading things, whether that's reading random things on the internet or even listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos? And can I maximize those times by saying, okay, while, when I listen to a podcast, I listen to a podcast on this subject. When I'm watching a YouTube video, I watch a YouTube video on this subject. The books I'm going to read in the next six weeks are going to be on this subject. The idea being like, can I, can I ramp up the intensity on one idea to make the most of it as opposed to what I think happens a lot, which is we kind of just like throw that time in various 15 different buckets. And maybe we get somewhere over the course of a year or two years or three years if you continue to read on it. But instead, like, what can you actually accomplish if you say, okay, like for me, I listen to a podcast oftentimes when I'm working out or parts of my workout. So like, that's kind of my podcast time because I don't drive anywhere anymore. So instead of listening to whatever X random podcast that I'll usually dip into, I kind of have a cue of like, so for me right now, the, the deep dive I'm on is related to the active learning online. It's, it's on this, this idea of uh, cohort based learning. So cohort based learning really quickly is the kind of the next evolution of online learning. So online learning has been kind of started with what's called MOOCs, massive online open courses. Take a course, you pay $49, watch videos at your own speed, at your own pace. There, there you go. Um, and the issue with that, the challenge with that is that most MOOCs, most of those courses see like a 3% completion rate. Um, and the reasons are varied and we don't have to get into it. But the, the cohort-based learning is, can I take the best of, let's say, a college course? And can I take the, the best of what can be done online and put them together, right? Um, and so that's kind of obviously the workshop that I'm working on now. And so that's the deep dive. And so I found a couple subject matter experts on that subject, found a bunch of podcasts that they're on because we live in this wonderful time where if you... Uh, if you are interested in, and, and put a little bit of effort in, you can find smart people talking about just about everything at this point. Um, and I'm reading a couple of books and blah, blah, blah. I'll, my point simply being, I think that that's a really useful and valuable, and maybe six weeks isn't enough. Maybe it's eight weeks. Maybe it's three months. I don't actually know yet, but just kind of shifting that mindset from randomness to specificity from whatever comes in to actually looking at being a little bit more intentional with what we read, what we watch, and what we listen. I, I certainly see the value in that. I would get bored. You think so? Yeah. I don't, yeah. yeah. So if dot, 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 mm -hmm. unless I was really doing like what you're doing because it's such a passion play. So, and maybe that's, so I'm thinking about this, like, when you're saying that, it's like, would I do that for longevity? Mm -hmm. Would I just do six weeks just on longevity? And the reason I, I, I choose not to do that is because I like to pull out of that mm -hmm. and get fringe stuff and then create the parallels. Mm -hmm. and make the connections. Make the connections. Yeah, interesting. Yep. So I like to... So like... It's what's happening recently with me is, you know, I read alchemy and it's all about the psychological part of that. And you read, um, chatter and then you read, uh, rejection proof. Seemingly those have no connection whatsoever mm -hmm. yet. They are all it's there. When you read those three books, it, they're all talking about the exact same thing. Interesting. It's yeah. all the exact same thing. Yeah. And that's what's really fun for me is to draw yeah. the through lines between seemingly completely different subjects. And I think that's what I like to do is take um, um, big picture things, multifaceted things, and break them down into their um, lowest common denominator mm -hmm. and simplify, simplify, simplify. 
And when you do that, then all of a sudden you go, oh, and this is how this one thing, if I understand this, can affect and resonate and yeah. um, have massive impact in this one. Like mm-hmm. the way I experience rejection or honestly, all the way up to life, life, like life space, it's all <coughs> the same thing, which is the way the mind processes information. Yeah. So yeah, that's if, that, you're, yeah, you're spot on. I love that. Yep. You know, but if I like when I was starting my training career, like everything I read, watched, listened, and it's still to this day is it has to f- fit into this. To me, it's the just in time thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, but I don't take it to the level you have. Not saying it's right or wrong at yeah. all, because I'm, I'm not, to I'm you not saying, even sure if it's right or wrong yet. I'm, yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm not four or five I'm, weeks I'm into the way it. you're saying. I'm like that sounds pretty yeah. awesome because you'd really have. You know, at the end of you know six to eight weeks, you'd really have a really pretty strong understanding. No way are you an expert whatsoever. Of course, yep. Um, but like when I got into the breath work stuff, like yep. over a year ago, you know, and I, I didn't go one hundred percent in there. I think because of that it allowed me to like see the parallels and how it would affect the other areas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The balanced frisbee. Balanced frisbee. I keep coming back to the balanced frisbee. Cool. Love it. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I'll keep you posted on the deep dive. Let you know if it. Well, I'm gonna I'm sticks. gonna read Get Different and Blue Ocean. That's on my Blue Ocean strategy. Those are, those two are on my list. So. I'm gonna add one more. Just I'm gonna give you a trifecta just for oh. folks out there who really want to get into. Um, Look at this. The bo- If you stuck with the podcast yeah, long enough, long you, get enough a, you get a bonus. Not That's only it. that, you buy buy five get one free. <laughs> so one of my biggest principles of of branding uh, of marketing is. Um, don't try to be the best, try to be the only. And so there's the, and that's a, we could have a whole conversation about that, but that's what that's in many ways. That's what these two books are about. So I'm just going to throw one more in there. That is, that is, uh, a, a good compliment called Zag. It's a very short book by Marty Neumeyer. Um, uh, so Zag, Get Different and Blue Ocean Strategy are three. If you really feel like, gosh, I am tired of, of trying to figure out how to do what everybody else is doing, but just a little bit better. Um, that would be, that would, those three books cool. would be a good deep dive to me. Very cool. All right. Anything else as it relates to this? This is, I think this worked. I don't know. You tell me, you think this worked? We'll let them tell us. All right. Let us know. And then in two or three months when Ben and I have read five more books, we'll do it again. Uh, anything you want to leave anybody with, with your, uh, with your books or thoughts on, no, books or I'll, thoughts I'll, on I'll just say like, I, this is the way I operate is you've recommended good books to me before. So I'm literally, when we hang up this, I'm going on Amazon, I'm literally buying get different blue ocean and zag. Awesome. So awareness, intention and action. Like Love it. that's, that's how we have to move forward. So, um, for sure. All right, man. Thank you. That was fun. Um, I might have to go pick up re- rejection proof because that actually feels like something that would be useful to me. Um, man. Thank you everybody out there for listening. Let us know if you like this episode uh, and we'll do it again at some point. Thank you for your ratings and your reviews. Ben and I will be back next week for another episode of Chasing Excellence. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.